I have been studying for a while how to implement the Kalman filter to estimate the orientation of a system using quaternions as the orientation representation. Finally, I have came up with some algorithms very similar to those described in some papers by Dr. Markley and Dr. Krasidis. They call it the multiplicative Kalman filter. Although their design can receive measurements from any direction, so they can use star trackers, for example, as the sensor. While currently I am using an IMU as the measurement source. And an IMU gives us measurements about only one direction, the direction of gravity. So in this video I am going to give some details about this processing sketch and these algorithms. This video is the long one. If you prefer to see the short version, check the video description. If you are interested in acceleration integration to obtain position, you also have a link in the description. I have used Arduino connected to a low-cost IMU, the MPU6050. The data is sent by the cellular port and received and processed in the computer. If you have a different IMU or board, you can adapt your code to send the data, because the communication protocol is very simple. If you have seen the first video, you'll know that the code is available. You also have the link in the description. The transmitter part has just a few lines of code. When we launch the processing sketch, Without forgetting to connect the Arduino taking measurements from the IMU, the first scenario we see is this one. There are some spacecrafts displayed, each one with its labor for knowing which algorithm is being used to estimate its orientation. The camera is orthographic, so no deformations are produced on the spacecrafts to simulate the perspective. Then we can compare the orientation of the spacecrafts in an ambiguous way. We have some controllers here to reset the orientation information and to set the same orientation for all estimators. We need all of them to have converged because the orientation that is set is the mean of all of them. To set the same orientation and adjust it at our convenience. We have a slider to control the update frequency to see how it affects to the estimation accuracy. One of the things I have found is that given a sensor with some precision, as this MPU one a faster update frequency produces an increase in the estimation accuracy, bigger than that produced by using a better sensor. That is good, because increasing the update frequency is generally cheaper than buying a better sensor. The price of these things goes up quickly. We can also choose to see what will happen with a very limited processor, like the one inside the Arduino. I have measured the update frequency of these algorithms in the Arduino, and I have found that these over here are updated about 5 times per second. These ones are updated about 25 and this one about 400. That's why in this mode these are worse than this and this than this. And that's why we need to know our hardware capabilities to choose the best estimator under our restrictions. The best estimator depends on your hardware. This last button is for activate or deactivate something. To know what, you will have to read my papers. Link in the description. Anyway, you will not find almost any difference in having this button activated or not. In this tab, we can see the incoming data. The data the Arduino is sending by the serial port. We see here the data rate, how many data packages arrive each second, And here we can choose the data source. 
Now the algorithms are processing serial data, but you can choose to simulate perfect static data, or what I have called bad data. The static data is the data that will be received if we had a perfect IMU in a perfectly static position, but having the inherent noise from the sensor. We see here how the algorithms start converging from the previous orientations to the new ones. When we choose bad data, the incoming data are just set to zero. In this tab we have some settings. We can choose whether or not to see the spacecraft. If some spacecraft suddenly turns invisible, that is because the estimator has crashed. If the quaternion has an N, not a number, in its components, its visibility button is deactivated. You also can set here some of the Kalman filter parameters. These are the numbers in the diagonal of these matrices. The covariance matrix of the gyroscope measurement is proportional to the identity matrix, and this number is the factor of proportionality. The same happens with the covariance matrix of the accelerometer measurement, with the covariance matrix of the angular velocity process noise, and with the covariance matrix of the acceleration process noise. We can see the effects of having bad sensors. Or what are the consequences of telling the algorithm that the rotational changes are very slow? Here the algorithm thinks changes are not that fast. It can't be happening that fast. Or very fast rotational changes. Here the algorithm thinks that the changes can be very fast. And he starts considering that the measurement noises are true changes in orientation. This other informs the algorithm of the non-gravitational accelerations that could act on the system. This number is very low, you are saying that there aren't accelerations other than gravity. Then any acceleration is considered gravitational. So if I make this, then the algorithm corrects the orientation in the direction of what it thinks that is the gravity. In contrast, if this number is very high, it needs to perceive a tendency in the acceleration to label it as the gravity direction. That produces a slow response. We can see how it would be the measurements of an imprecise sensor and how, even in these conditions, the algorithms are able to give a decent estimation. Okay. If you want more information about these orientation estimation algorithms, you can read my papers. You will find there some of the properties you have seen in this video together with some other information. So here ends this extended explanation about the sketch and the algorithm properties. We still need to review the dead recording part, but I prefer to separate it from this video. Thank you for watching.